<laughs> get all my stuff together here. We're going to have to get you something to put that camera on. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. We'll chill for a few minutes, let people show up. Okay, get our stuff together. I think I've got everything that I need. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and today we are here for Sew Together Tuesday Part 2. So <laughs> it's Wednesday, but it's Sew Together Tuesday. Um, so we are doing our second day of the Nutty Nag, a pattern that we did from Rustic Horseshoe. Um, and we're just going to continue working on that today. So I hope you joined us yesterday. If you missed it, if you missed the beginning of this, you can watch today, and you'll want to go back and watch yesterday's, which is available here on Facebook. But we also upload all of these to Instagram and to YouTube too. So um, if you have seen a Sew Together Tuesday at some time in the past as well, and you want to go find that, you can also find it here or YouTube or Instagram. So YouTube is definitely the easiest. And we have a whole playlist of all of our Sew Together Tuesday videos, um, which is a great resource for you. So um, today we're going to continue on. Make sure that you uh, leave your city and state and um, let me know where you're from. We're going to be giving away a kit to make a horse just like this, including the pattern and the stuffing and the fabrics and all of that good stuff, and we'll send that to you. So at the end of today's video, then Ellen will draw a winner and we'll send you um, a whole kit so you can make your own. Okay, um, so today we're going to start with what we, like where we did yesterday, but I wanted to backtrack just a little bit because I got um, a question from um, our friend Vicki from Scotland who wanted to know about doing applique. And so in this pattern, um, you can do, let me see if I can find a picture that shows you, you can do applique to add some fun features to it. So this it, right here is all done as applique, it's not pieced in. Uh, and if you do the, I'm going to set this down and let you keep looking at that, and I'm going to see if I can find the donkey had some applique. No, I think it's around his eyeballs. You can't really see it too super well, but there's some applique around his eyes, and on his tail there's some applique. All right, so he's just a little bit different, um, but you can do applique on... Um, the nose, if you want to do any sort of um, markings, if you wanted to make it look especially like your horse, if you have one, you could add the markings for that, and she shows you how to do that. But Vicki had asked about doing that, and so I wanted to explain really briefly about applique. Um, the easiest thing to do when you want to do um, the applique with cuddle is to cut out your other piece, you're going to glue baste it onto the other piece, and then you top stitch it. So the way that I like to do that is with a water soluble topper. So this is one that we have today from Floriani. Um, that's just water soluble, so it'll, it'll pull off and any bits that are left on your fabric will just wash away. Um, so you could just spritz it with water. It'll come right off. That keeps the stitches looking nice. You're just going to want to um, zigzag it or do a blanket stitch. It's really super easy. We have a whole video about doing applique, um, so you can check that out. Ellen said she'll post a link for it um, that we did um, all about applique. So you can do it with die cutting, and you can do it with situations like this. So there's lots of information there about using a stabilizer behind it and using a topper and how to get it to stick stick together so you can sew it and all that sort of stuff. Um, the other one that we talked about that with would be the um, the jelly bean faces pillow that we did a few weeks ago or a month, month and a half ago, whatever it was that we did that. Um, we talked a lot about applique in that one too and the different stitches you can use and lengths and blah blah blah. So lots of information out there. That's what you want to do. Okay? So, um, so today we've got, yesterday we did the legs. Okay, so here are all my little legs. I've got four legs. I've got back legs, front legs. Okay, two different sizes. You remember you want to start with the bigger ones because they're going to be a little bit easier than the smaller ones. So practice on the big ones, do the smaller ones. We got those finished, and then we made his little muzzle with the little nostrils, which are pretty darn adorable. Yeah, those little nostrils is a cute little cute little addition to the pattern. I really like that. So we got the, um, the muzzle done, and I'm going to do the ears today, and then we're going to start putting it together. So are there any questions to start with? We got anything? Okay. All right. Then we're just going to keep going. All right, guys, we have a ton to do today. And um, yeah, and we only get to do today because tomorrow I've got other video stuff I have to do. Okay. So I, um, 
Just to re reiterate, I traced out all of my patterns, cut them out, and um, I used a rotary cutter and just a pair of scissors this time. So this is my ear. I've traced the pattern. I've traced the fold lines on this. So one of my little tricks for when I'm transferring these markings is to actually fold these here so that when I'm doing this, I'll put my pattern on here and I can fold this back and then I trace along that line. Okay. So same thing happens over here is I'll fold that back and trace along that line. So I just pre-fold those lines a little bit and that's what I do instead of trying to do this is I'll just actually fold on that line. Okay, so that's a little trick for you. It, the um, interfacing is optional for this and because Cuddle is so thick, we don't need to add anything. This is the finished ear and you can see it's plenty stable. It doesn't need any interfer interfacing in it at all to make it stand up better. Okay, so if you were using a cotton, this would be a time that you would wanna use interfacing. All right, all right. So I'm going to pin this one together and I'm gonna pin at either end of it, oops, and somewhere in the middle. And then I pin right along, all right. Okay, we talked about it yesterday. Rustic Horseshoe is the pattern designer for this pattern. She has a whole bunch of patterns that are super cute. And she has um, the little ride-on toys, which are even better ones, like stick horses. Um, but she has like a stick horse and a stick llama and it was a kangaroo, I think. And yeah, she's got a bunch of stuff. So check out her patterns. The Nutty Nag is on sale if you use the coupon code SHANNON30 in all caps. And you'll get 30% off this pattern, the PDF version on her site. Okay, so make sure that you check out rustichorseshoe.com and see what all of her patterns are. Okay, she's also got some eyeballs there and there's a shop uh, called Old Alley Quilt Shop that is in Sherburne, Minnesota that also has eyes and she has a couple of different sizes. So check out both of those places and um, yeah, see what you got. Okay, so I've got this all pinned up. Okay, lots of pins in there. Not terrible, but you know, a fair amount. It's not as much as the circles. The circles we get a little bit crazier. Okay, so we're gonna come around and sew this guy. All right, so I've got my 9014 stretch needle polyester thread. I'm using a 2.5 stitch length on this because when I'm doing stuffed animals, I like to use a, um, what I like to call a regular stitch length. I'm not expanding it at all because I want it to hold nice and tight while I'm sewing this. I'm gonna grab my stiletto. All right, and we'll put this underneath and I put it all the way so it goes past the, um, basically a hole so that I can stitch and then back stitch to catch that seam. Okay, if I start right at the edge, it's gonna suck it under and I don't want that to happen. Okay, so I've got my stiletto in hand and I'm not always gonna use it, um, so yes, but I carry it with me just in case. So then I'm in situations like this where I'm starting to turn, I can hold this and start to make it, make it go where I want it to go. Okay. I'm gonna give it one more stitch, and then I'm gonna lift my foot, turn it a little, and keep on going, all right? I'm just gonna stitch all the way around this, making sure that I'm not stitching over my pins. All right, if I can get you guys to break any bad habits, it'll be stitching over pins. Don't do it. Okay, get to the end, back stitch, and then clip this. So there were some questions yesterday about clipping curves. And if I were doing this with a fabric other than cuddle, um, I would clip my, clip my curves here to make this turn inside. But because it's cuddle and it's knit fabric and super soft, all it does is give it a little bit of body. I have a little sneeze coming, just a warning. Okay, I can, I, can, I can feel it, it's, oh. okay. So yeah, if I suddenly sneeze, you'll, it won't scare you, that's all, okay? All right, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to match up my, like the markings of the, or the shape of the fabric. I can see the line here on my inside, okay? So I'm gonna stab this through here and I'm gonna stick a pin basically on that fold line. Okay, and I've got these two edges so that they're pretty even. And I'm gonna, so there's my, there's my line. You can see it in there. So I'm gonna line these up and I'm gonna put that pin in there. 
Okay, so what that does is it keeps these edges together and lets me turn this on the pin, basically. All right, and at that point, I will pin that in place. Okay, same way here is I'm gonna use that pin to get this to come over. And so what that does is it gets these to almost butt up to each other. All right, those little pieces. So if I show you on the pattern here, this is the way it works is this folds in along that line and this folds in along this line, okay? These overlap because they have seam allowances on them, but when you're done, they almost butt up there, all right? That's how the ear works, which is actually clever because it gives us some shape there. All right, so now I've got another ear. So guess what I'm gonna do with it? Zigzag that baby closed, okay? Let me get my pins. All right, so now I'm gonna switch it, five, five, zigzag, same like I always do. Well, not always, but mostly, okay? And now I'm just gonna zigzag across the end of that. All right. So this is just sort of holding that in place and keeping it where um, it needs to be kind of sealing up those ends, for lack of a better word. Um, because they'll want to sort of spread apart and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so we did that on all the uh, ends of the legs as well. All right, so now I've got my ears and you can see the ears are shaped so that they have, they sort of go down in either direction. All right, so we're gonna use this line when we're doing out when we're placing them so we've got two pieces of the face the face i will admit that i had to look at the pattern several times to get it to work out right because it's um it's just put together a little bit differently than i've done before okay but i've transferred all of my markings oops i didn't transfer those i said i did guess what remember how i told you i'm really bad at transferring markings sometimes i got the eyeball okay i'm gonna put that in there okay so there's my ear markings so if i look at my pattern ear notches are here so my ears are going to come off there i'm going to turn these over because we want them right sides together okay and the way that the ears work is that they go up okay so this was really confusing to me and i couldn't figure out which way they went so you can see the ears sort of when i get them lined up on the edge they sort of curl upward okay let me show you on the pattern really quick what I'm talking about. So this is how I figured that out, okay? So they sort of go up a little bit and that was how I can remember that, okay? It's just by that, um, that placement. Because if you get the ears on the wrong side, the ears are gonna be literally on backwards. And it's really hard for me to tell from this position where the ears go, um, okay? So I've got this over here and I'm just gonna line these up on my notches now that I have it going the right direction. Okay, so that's why I lay it right side up first is to get it going the right direction and then I can move it to fit between my notches. All right, so I'm gonna pin this three times in here. It's a little space, but the reason I'm pinning it so much is because this is really thick. All right, so if I pin this real well, it's gonna feed through my machine a little bit better. All right, I'll do the same thing here. So I've got these together I'm gonna turn this over so I can see my notches, but I'm not moving my ear. My ear is still on there in the same place. Okay, going the same direction. I'm gonna match up my fold here. And I'm gonna pin it. Okay. Oh, it shoved over just a tiny bit. I can feel it. Okay, and then I'll pin it up here. And then I'm gonna pin it in the middle just to get that to flatten down. All right, so now we're gonna sew these on with a, uh, basically a scant quarter because you're gonna sew this seam line again. But what I'm gonna do is just try to make sure that it's caught. Okay. Switching it back to a straight. Oops, why is it over there? There we go. All right. So now, we're just gonna stitch right along that. Okay, and that's just gonna hold those guys down. You could also zigzag these in place, and that would maybe smash that a little bit more if you wanted to do that. 
All right. Get that to catch. I can sort of use these pins. You can see I kind of can push it a little bit um, in lieu of the stiletto as I just use the pins to sort of push it forward. All right. Okay. So now we've got our muzzle or face face pieces. All right. So then we have our middle our um, forelock is what it's called. Sorry, I'm not a horse person. I forget these words. It's not a mane. Um, so what I did is um, in the pattern instruction, she shows you how to do it with yarn. I did it with cuddle because I have cuddle and not yarn. Um, so what I did is I have a piece here that is two and a half or two by six inches. That's about two by six inches, okay? And what I did is I marked on this with quarter inch lines, okay? So this is my middle. These are quarter inch lines. I'm actually going to divide this in two and stack these and then sew them together. And I'll explain what I'm doing as I go, but I'm doing this differently. Like I said, I will probably, I need to <laughs> write a little post about it, okay? So let me get that little flick. <laughs> Little, little extra cuddle dust happen in there. All right. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack these together. And I'm gonna pin across, or sew across here. Okay. So I'm gonna sew this middle piece together. So this becomes one. All right, so let's do that real quick. Okay, so in the pattern, she has you do this with yarn and you sort of wrap it around like a piece of cardboard or a loom or something, okay? And you can absolutely do that. It's super easy. Okay, so now I've got this fold or stitch, which is gonna make this fold really easily. So I'm just gonna fold this in half. Okay, so now I have four layers of cuddle here that I'm gonna stitch along here to create the little um, seam line basically. All right, so I'm gonna get my stiletto because it's gonna need it because it's thick and doesn't really want to go through. Okay. All right, so now I've got a little seam line here. This is just gonna hold these two together while I do the next part. All right. And I'm not gonna cut these out yet. So I've got, these are my cutting lines and I'm just gonna leave them there for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and where we have the, um, it's the forelock notch is what they call it, okay? So I'm gonna stick this guy right there. And this is about an inch, which will give me um, my quarter inch seam allowance over there, all right? So I'm gonna pin this in place. Okay, so again, this was a two by six piece of fabric that I cut on the bias. So this trick of the, the cutting it on the bias is um, thanks to Gail. She told me about this. She's I watching. tried it and it worked. Hi, Gail. And um, yeah, and I'm probably doing it slightly different than she does, but that's, that's the way we sew, slightly different. So she told me about doing that. It worked really well. So. I am trying it. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is get these guys to go together. These ears get in the way. Probably should have done that first. Okay, so I'm gonna pin this real carefully. And I'm gonna pin this up here. Okay, and I'm just trying to keep all of these together so that those edges stay nice and even. Okay, all the way to here. All right, so a ton of pins. Again, look at this, like every half inch this time. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to sew across here. I'm actually gonna start from this side, even though my pins are here, because I know that this is gonna be really hard to get under my machine and to get it start working. So I'm actually gonna turn it over and I'm gonna stitch from this side, and then I can end it over here and I can sort of force it with my stiletto, okay? But my little forelock pieces are hanging out here. Totally looks like a forelock, right? I don't know. Looks kind of weird. <laughs> okay, we're going to try sewing it all the way across. Let's do that. Should 
probably get some of these pins again. All right. Okay, so this side I can get underneath my machine, no problem. So that's why I'm going to start there. So that was real easy, my back stitch. And if you remember, we're in a back stitch, all the seams that we do here when we do actual seams, um, because it's going to get some, it's going to get some stress as we're, we're doing this and pulling things around. Okay, so that's catching that mane in there. You can hear it kind of ka-chunking because it's, it's a lot. Okay, I'm going to get these stabbed together there. Get this over, back stitch a little, and then cut my thread. All right. Yay, so now I've got this guy in here. I'm gonna leave this like this and we're gonna deal with it later, okay? So that's just gonna be the way it is. All right, so now the other seam we're gonna do is down here, okay? So now we're gonna sew this little guy that's at the bottom, so on the pattern, it's this seam right here, this little one right here. That's what we're gonna sew. So that's a pretty easy one. And I can actually pin it like this, and sew right along there, okay? So I'm gonna do that, because it's just a little bitty seam, it's not gonna go anywhere, it's not got a lot of stuff pulling on it, so I'm just gonna stick one little pin in there just to hold it in place, get it in place, and you can see I pinned it so that it sort of went off, so that I could actually start stitching without having to take that pin out. Okay. So I always wanna try to pin where I can leave them in for as long as possible. All right, so super quick and easy. All right, so now we've got this. It's starting to look like something. Um, I'm not sure it's a horse yet, but it's looking like something. So this is where the muzzle goes. So this piece here is gonna go right into here. All right, so on our muzzle piece, we should have, if I did it right, we should have a little line. Oh, there it is, look at I did it. I transferred the markings. Okay, so this is my bottom center, which is gonna go on that seam line. Okay, and I'm going to pin that in place. I'm going to do the same thing up here. I've got a center seam line. Yes, I'm so happy I transferred my markings. This is when I have to go back and find the pattern and figure it out. It's frustrating, so I'm glad I did it right this time. All right, so now I'm going to pin this whole guy in there. Okay. See if we can get this to work right. Okay, all of a sudden I'm like, is that right? But yeah, it is. Okay, so you see I have to kind of kind of give it a little oomph, and I'm gonna pin this and just work it through all the way. Okay. Ouch. Oh I did it, you guys. I stabbed myself hard enough to ouch. Everybody's always like, you don't even stab yourself. Like, I do it all the time. I'm gonna get this all pinned in. What are they saying over there? <laughs> well, they, they, always, they always think it's funny that you surprised yourself with the markings. <laughs> well, it's because I mess it up so often. I have really good intentions, but I just don't do it very well. Um, and here, I'm, I'm trying to flatten that seam, so I'm gonna pin that so that it's flat. Okay, so people always ask if I open the seams or if I nest them and stuff like that. So. I do try to keep it open as long as I can. So this situation, this is one that I found. There's a couple of times in here in this pattern that I will tell you that the digital dual feed kind of gets in the way. So if you just have a walking foot, you'll actually have an easier time with this part of the process than I do, because um, sewing in this little circle, the digital dual feed kind of gets in the way. So this will be fun to watch me, watch me struggle through this one. Okay, it's not terrible, but it definitely took me a little bit more time, and this circle isn't, um, it isn't big enough to fit around your free arm. So if you open up your free arm, it doesn't really help because it, it's not big enough, okay? So we're just gonna work around this real nice and slow, okay? Are you ready? Okay. So I'm going to stick this part under there. 
first, okay? All right, so I've got all of these pins that are from the other side that need to kind of get out of the way, okay? So this is where it becomes a little challenge, so please be patient with yourself, okay? I'll try to be patient with myself. You guys be patient with me too. I know, it's kind of crazy in there. It's a lot of pins. So this would be one, if you're really struggling with all of these pins, this would be a place that you could actually just hand baste it. And then come into your machine and do it, okay? So it's because it's a lot of pins, I totally get it. Try real hard to get these to, to flatten out the way it's supposed to. And I can't get my face into the machine like I sometimes do when I'm downstairs because we've got, you know, camera and all sorts of stuff. There's that. Okay. Is it making am I making it look easy today, guys? <laughs> fight, fight. I don't like it. I'm in for the good fight here. We will, we will win one way or the other. Whoops, I don't want to sew over the top of that pin from that side. That's craziness. Okay. So like I said, I tried this with the, um, on the Bernina with the regular walking foot and it was actually a little bit easier, but then I had to bring the other, that other machine up here and yeah, I wasn't gonna do it. So, and not everybody can switch their machines around. So I'm doing it this way, okay. And then when we're done, we're gonna come back and check it. Also, the thing with working with Cuddle is you can do this kind of like, oh my gosh, it's so craziness, and somehow it often just works. Okay. Okay, here we go, we're coming back around. Here's my seam. Okay, and back stitch just a tiny. And we'll take this out, and then we'll see what happened, okay? We'll see what I need to catch. Oh, I'm going to need to catch that again. I can see that. Okay. Okay, so I see I caught right here. I didn't catch quite enough. So before I do anything else, I'm going to come back over this and I'm going to recatch that. So you can see here, I'm just catching the hair, which means that that will come out. Okay, so I'm actually going to take a few stitches out if I can find my blade again. Okay. So what happens is this caught just the very edge of it, which um, it needs to catch more, because especially because I'm gonna stuff this guy. Um, oh, come on, little one. I need my magnifiers more than these guys, these glasses. Okay, Let's see if we can get this moving, hold on. I really need my other glasses. Just trying to get a couple of these caught. Let's get, there we go. Now I can feel it broke loose. Okay. Okay, so that's the key is just getting a couple of these. Then I can kind of hit the stitches and it'll just come out, which is great. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to repin that so that it catches a little bit better. All right, that's just that was too close for for my comfort. All right, so let's do that again. We're just going to sew this one section. Okay, and we try to come back in there and catch my catch where I was sewing before and then come back over here and catch a little bit more. Okay, so sometimes this happens, but we want to make sure that we catch all of this stuff beforehand. If you find out that you did later, you can always hand stitch it. And if this is just, you know, uncomfortably difficult, you can totally just hand stitch it. Um, and just use a good polyester thread. Okay. 
Um, why did you uh, use the blade and not a seam ripper? Oh, well, because the blade, I can act, I just have better control over it. So the seam, the part where I was trying to catch the thread, I could use a seam ripper. What I have found, and I don't think I even brought one up here, um, is that this point, this point here is much smaller and will get underneath one thread better than a regular seam ripper. The regular seam ripper is like the the part that slides under is actually pretty big. And so it's hard to do that with this knit fabric. And then once I get one of these snipped, you saw I kind of went inside and just snip, 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 snip. Okay, and I can just sort of run the blade in between to get rid of those stitches, okay? So that's why I use this. Um, you could absolutely start it with the other, but I found that if I just sort of run that along. Okay, so see, I'm gonna fix a bunch of things, you guys, because that's annoying me. That, I didn't catch it all the way. This is gonna be one of those days. Sorry, I wanna stick it right up by my eyeballs, but it doesn't work when I have my contacts in. Okay, so I can get the thread snipped, and then I just kinda of, sorta of can pull it, and then at this point, can you still see me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then I can sorta of stick this in here and just kind of wiggle it, and it'll cut threads. Okay, so I only had to find a couple little threads, and then it's done. Okay, so this slipped down while I was sewing, and it popped out. And I don't want that, so I'm gonna go back in and stitch it. <laughs> okay, we may be here for three hours today, guys. Just, you know, sorry. <laughs> It'll be like me and four people. Okay. Not a sprint, a marathon. That's right, okay. Make sure that stays up there. All right. All right. Now let's see if that worked. If I'm happier there. Yeah. Okay. Ta da. All right. So now, whoo, now it looks like a face, at least a little bit more so, right? Okay. We got the little muzzle, we got the ears, this is the little forelock, we'll deal with that later, okay? So we got a little face done. It's pretty cute. All right, so next step is um, we're gonna put, I wanna make sure that I did that right, that she does it, that I did it the way she did. That we're gonna put the, put the body together, yep. Okay, so now we've got our front piece. This is the one that we did yesterday, okay? So this is the front body piece that we traced out yesterday. All right, so I'm actually gonna put the head on. She tells you to put the legs on first. I'm gonna put the head on first because I didn't like dealing with the legs. Um, but I'm gonna put the head on and then the legs. And we're just gonna deal with the front of the body and then the back of the body. So this is different in that we're putting front and back together, which isn't how I've done stuffed animals before. So it's been kinda, it was kind of an interesting way of doing it. Um, and I do see why it was put together that way. So. That's what we're doing, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna pin this guy right up here. So this center seam in its face, its muzzle or I guess its neck, is gonna come right to that little line. So when I trace this, I drew that little line to show where I needed to flip the pattern, but it also comes in really handy because now it's my marking for the center. Okay, so I'm gonna pin that there. I'm gonna pin either end. Okay, and then I'm gonna pin in between. And because this is a fairly straight line, I don't need so many pins. Okay, so one of the things about this, and we talked about it just briefly yesterday, is that I'm making this at 100%. So these little parts that are pretty fidgety, you could absolutely make this larger and you'd be totally fine. Okay, so if you made this at 120% or something like that, all of those parts that are a little bit difficult it would be much easier. Okay, so, um, and the other thing too is to, um, you can always try this in a cotton fabric first so you can sort of get the motions down before you try it and cuddle. Okay, for those of you who are, have already cut out your fabric and are doing it, you're just gonna take your time, okay? 
And then if you're doing if you're doing this pattern or any of the other ones that we do for Sew Together Tuesday, if you're in that I Love Cuddle group, I know a few people have done that where they've posted about it, where they've had issues. You can always do that because me or one of our other brand ambassadors will, you know, totally step up and answer questions. All right. So now we've got the face. Oh, look at that. It's starting to look like something. Yay. Okay. And here, so here's this body. We're going to put its little bottom legs on. All right, so the thing I want to do here is I want to check the nap of my feet. Okay, so this is the nap is going down. This the nap is going up. Okay, so I know I want my foot to go on this way. So it will flip up. Okay. Now I'm going to put these legs right in here between those notches. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. And I'm going to check because I know that the nap is going to run, run yeah, down the middle. Okay, so then this way goes, it goes this direction. So I'm going to flip that leg over and pin it in place now. And pinning that in the wrong place. <coughs> that was my center, center mark. Sorry guys, that'd have been pretty funny. Yeah, it would have been like offset legs, that'd be weird. Okay, so now those are pinned on. I can sew those, but I'm gonna pin the arms on as well. Okay, so in the pattern she shows you two different ways of doing the arms where you can actually sew the sides and then cut a slit, stick the arm in and then sew it so that the arms go off the side. Um, I'm gonna show you on this guy. So this one you can see that they're set into the seams. Okay, that's the way I'm going to do the ones today. She also shows you how you could do them so that they come in this direction. There's a slit in the side of the fabric and then they hang down. I, she shows you the pictures of how they look different. They don't really look different enough to me to make that seem like a doable, like to make it that much harder for myself. So I'm just going to sew it into the side seam because that was easy enough. Okay, and I think that looks super cute. It turns on itself and hangs down just fine. Okay. So I think with uh, cotton, it might look a little bit funkier, but with the cuddle, it worked out great. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. The only thing I'm gonna check with the arms, I don't really care so much the nap here because the legs aren't sticking straight out. They're gonna kinda do other things. So the nap is this way. I would like the whole of the arm to be at the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it so that when I sew this on, the hole is underneath so that when I top stitch that, if it's not super cute, it's fine because it's gonna be hanging on its body anyway. I'm just gonna pin that on there, basically centered over the notch mark. Okay, so I'm putting one arm there. This one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna check to see there's, there's my little stuffing hole. So I'm gonna make sure that one goes down and I'm gonna center that over that seam or that notch marking as well okay so now we'll go pin or we'll go sew all four of those down okay and we're just gonna um, hold those in place is all we're doing all right so I'm gonna do this from the back side so I can see it a little bit easier so I can see that edge because there's so much fuzz from the other side All right. So I'm just basically tacking these down. When I come back around, I'm gonna catch those um, for real. Um, if you do it a scant, a scant quarter, if it ends up sliding around, you'll be all right. Um, and it won't show any of the stitches. I'm also okay with taking a bigger seam allowance later to catch it all. Okay, and I'm not back stitching here because I'm actually gonna stitch over all of this later and really secure those. Okay, so I'm just trying to, trying to hold them there. And as we go. So it's a little bit like chain piecing, except, you know, not. But if I can, you know, sort of corral my 
tasks together a little bit. That tends to be how I like to sew in general anyway. All right, so now we've got all of those on. Okay, so look at that. <laughs> it's almost like a little horse. You can see it's actually becoming something, which is great, because it's always kind of the best part is when you can see it's actually going to be something. Um, this is, you know, we're getting to roadkill stage, um, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite part of, you know, stuffed animals. Okay. All right. So the next part, I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. According to what she said, are they laughing at me again? Laughing. You're laughing at me. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. All right. I'll make sure they're laughing with me, not against me. Okay. Um, so the next part that we want to do is the head, is the back of the head. Okay. So what I did with this, and I'll show you the whole process of drawing these little lines because that's what I saved this for. So this one is, it should be six inches. Okay. That's how long it is from here to here on the pattern. So the Mat, the main placement notch was six inches from here to here. So I'm using a six inch piece and I'm just do, using one piece for here. Um, so I'm doing this today as a little bit as an experiment to see if it's gonna work what, like I want it to um, and you get to try it out with me, okay? So what I found is that when I, the next step when I sew the head all together, this gets very thick. So at this point, I'm gonna make the main, but I'm not actually going to put it in. So we're gonna do the whole process, but I'm gonna set it to the side and we're gonna put him in, put it in later. Um, but I'm gonna show you what I did with that. Okay, I need my ruler. If I can get it off there, there we go. Okay. So I've got the silver marker because um, I need it so I can see on the dark fabric, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, so my, my piece is six inches. Here's my ruler, right, the six inches. Oh, I can turn this over so we don't get so much shine. Is that better? Okay, and then I'm just gonna line this up so that my quarter mark is along here. So this is how I tend to mark things, oops like this is I kind of go backwards. It's how I cut things too sometimes because um, I feel like I get a little bit more accuracy with it than trying to work out the other direction. So trying to draw a quarter line here and then a half and three quarter and working from this side over, I feel like I get a little bit less accuracy with it. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw right along here and I'm just gonna keep moving this over and drawing basically quarter inch lines. Okay. Okay, and if it gets a little off, I don't really care. I'm going to use these lines to cut on later, but I probably won't do them perfectly when I cut them either. Okay, if you can see with the black, um, you could totally do it. I would always try to get something that is at least um, not too far off. Like if I were doing, um, if I were doing a uh, ivory or a light tan mane, I would probably still use the silver Sharpie so that the black didn't show up on the edges. Okay, because this will be a time that the edges are actually gonna uh, show up when we have this finished. Okay, you're probably wondering what the heck is she doing and why? I don't know, because I'm crazy. Gail's probably being like, that's not what I told you to do. <laughs> okay. I always like her ideas, though. Okay. Also, you can see my ruler was marked with my name, because whenever you go to classes, please mark your name on your stuff. This is something that happens all the time as people leave their rulers. Leave their is this stuff. rectangle cut on the bias? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is a six by 10, because I marked it. It's a six by 10 cut on the bias. <laughs> like <laughs> trying to figure out which way is the, the not so, so the nap, the nap runs this way, yeah. See, the nap runs this way. 
Okay, so this way and this way are the, the left and rights, and this is the top to bottoms. Okay, that's how you can tell. It gives yep. it tiger stripes. All right, so then I'm going to mark this. That is not, oh, that's 10 inches. That's why I was like, wait a second. Okay, so now I'm going to mark 5 inches, and I'm going to sew that, and then fold it in half and stitch that down. All right? And what we're going to try to do, so what I'm going to do with this one, because we're like I said, we're just experimenting with me, um, is that I'm going to put this in afterward. Okay, so I'm going to leave a hole. I'm going to tuck it inside from uh, when we're, we're done sewing the head. So it's sort of like when we did the Kimber Bear. So if you were here for that one, um, that was what we did there. Okay, so I just stitched right along that line. I'm gonna fold this over. Okay, and then I'm gonna stitch this down with a quarter inch seam again. Okay, if that isn't perfect, it's fine. But I can kind of see right along this edge here, I can see my stitching line. I can keep that folded over. If I can get my fabric to move, that'd be great. Okay, there we go. It is stuck. Yep, it is stuck. Okay, guys, hold on. So you couldn't really see me over there, but I was twisting the hand crank. That makes all the difference. So when it's stuck like that, twist the hand crank until it starts to move, okay? You don't want to just yank it. Because if the hand crank is in certain positions, it won't, it won't move at all. I don't know what it grabbed there, but it did not like it. You guys didn't see this, but the, uh, the I was like, did the horse just the attack you? The other horse just attacked me. <laughs> I snickered, not at her. <clears throat> the horse just fell down off the shelf. Okay. <laughs> a, a big white puff of cuddle dust. <laughs> it sideswiped you. <laughs> okay, we'll stick that in a little further this time and see if I can get it to move. There we go. Okay, so the lesson there is hand crank it, and also if it's do it isn't moving very well, just you try a little and then stop. Okay, don't try to force it. All right, so now I've got this piece. So this piece should fit along here. boop a doo And I may have to trim it just slightly, but we'll see. <laughs> it has a little stinker right there. Okay, so this fits along that, that edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a hole so that later we can stick this in. Okay, so that's ready to do that part. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this so that I have that hole that I can later stick it in. Okay, this is the back of the head which actually looks like the back of the head. And you can see this is the part where it's going to hook onto the ear. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch these two little areas. Okay, so I'm going to stitch from, well, I'm actually going to stitch from up here because it's easier if I start in the fabric and go to the edge than if I start at the edge. Okay, so I'm going to start on the other side. I'm going to stitch right here and then I'm going to stitch right here. Okay, and I'm going to do the little side thing that we like to do, so where I stitch off the side of the fabric. All right? So I'm going to turn this this way so I can see. All right, and I'm going to stick this in. So here's my little notch, and I'm going to put this in here at about the quarter inch seam. I'm gonna put my needle down and then I'm gonna turn, stitch off. Okay, so you can see I purposely put my pin so that I could leave it in there while I was getting this first little bit going. Okay. So now I can get under there and I can sew this down toward that edge. All right, and as I do that, I have a little bit more control than if I started at that raw edge. Okay, so the same thing is going to happen up here. Okay, I'm going to repin that slightly so I can get my raw edges everywhere together nicely. Okay, so I'm going to stick this in. 
put this down a half inch. So this is gonna be a tiny seam. So this is where I'm like, I'm not sure this is gonna work as well as I want it to, but we're gonna find out. So thanks for joining along for the ride. Okay, then I'm gonna stitch along here. It's just a tiny little seam, back stitch. Okay, all right. So now this is the back of the head. All right, so normally this would be all closed up with the mane in it, but we're gonna do it just a little bit different and see if it works. I all think right? we need a hand crank cam. A like hand crank you a, cam? You do a lot of, uh, there's a lot of work going on with it's your true. right hand It's true, it's true. I do hand crank a lot. Okay. Yeah, it's because it just, like it comes in, it's very important sometimes. Okay, we really wanna be nice to our machine. Okay, so here's another little section that is exactly it. This one I stitched um, previous, but I actually did it wrong. Do I wanna leave a longer tail or a shorter, thicker tail? I think a shorter, thicker tail is actually what I need. Don't you think? We'll see. Okay, so there I pick a few stitches. And then I can come under here and just burp, burp, burp. So that's also one reason why you want to use bigger stitches and not too terribly tiny stitches because it will just come right out if you, if you do it right. Okay. All right. So this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half so that it is, um, yeah, that's the one I want to do. So I'm going to cut this in half so I can just double it up because I wanted a thick tail. But what I realize is that I want to lay them on top of each other uh, right to wrong side so that all the right sides are going up. I was thinking I could fold it in half and put it there, but if I do that, then there's wrong side and right side going up. Good flick and it's gone. Look at that. Okay, that's not all gone, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so now at this point, I want to make sure I have my... So this is 16 inches, so at 18 inches, this is where I want to draw my line okay that's a great that's a great question somebody just asked if we could show the bobbin case after we're done so oh we yeah see how oh, 100 percent. Uh, see how much uh, dust is being generated 100 percent. yes remind me hawk okay on it great suggestion d yeah it's a good one because it's a question i get a lot about how messy does it make your machine oops i want to stay there hold on okay I'm gonna fold that in half, do the same thing again. And I'm gonna start in just a little bit because this is really short and really thick right there. So it's, I knew it wasn't gonna to wanna to feed in very well. So I didn't stitch it across. You see, I started in quite a ways. I'm just tacking this is all I'm doing is trying to hold that in place. Okay, so now this is my tail. Here's my back. My, my notch is here. Okay, and I'm gonna make sure that I have at least a quarter of an inch down here. All right, so that's important is that I have um, my seam allowance down here. So I'm gonna put that up just the tiniest bit past that line. Okay, so basically that tail will come out right at its um, seam allowance, but it will allow it to have a little bit of space so that I can actually get around there. Okay, all right, so now I've got that in there. Okay, and I'm gonna put these two together. So now I'm sewing the back together, sandwiching my tail piece in there. Okay. And then that's going to need another good little flick to get rid of some more of that cuddle dust. Okay. You can see the difference with the cuddle dust though, is that um, like when I cut the C3, which is what this stuff is, is this little, this little dust that comes off is um, pretty small and not so floaty. So it settles pretty quickly. Um, stuff from the Lux Cuddles will definitely float more. Um, so I'm a lot more careful when I'm doing the Lux and I will definitely um, vacuum that more. With the Lux, or the regular Cuddle, I feel like it just kind of falls down and I don't know, it's not so bad. Probably not what some people are telling me though right now. <laughs> Okay, so we got, I got the bottom pin together. Okay, and I'm gonna pin just past the tail here. Okay, a few of those pieces, then I'm gonna pin through the tail too, so I can get 
the repin. So I can make sure that that's up there. Okay, so I can use my pin to sort of to pull it up so I can see it, make sure it's going to catch it. Okay, so now I can see that in there. So I don't have the same thing that happened up top. Okay, so now I'm going to sew this whole back. I'm just going to verify that I'm doing this right. So I've only made it before. Yep, yep, yep. All right, we got it. We got it. We're good. Okay. <laughs> Order of operations. Order of operations. Because if I haven't made it 8 million times, like self finding blankets I can make in my sleep. Um, this one. Not yet. Give me a few more tries. I'll find some more ways that I'm like, oh, and I would do this. I think you could do that. Okay, so I'm just going to sew up this back. You can see because this is cut on the lengthwise grain, it's just sewing together really nice and easily. I want to make sure that I catch this tail. So you can see how the fabric wants to pull over here. Okay, so it was straight right up here, and then all of a sudden it goes All right, that's because it's pinned and it's thick. So this is where your stiletto will come in really handy. So you're just going to move that into place and make sure it goes under the foot in the position that you want it in. Okay, so now all of a sudden it's back at the quarter inch seam line and it's where I want it to be. Okay, so don't forget, you own the fabric. Tell it what to do. Make it do what it's supposed to do. All right, so now I've got my little tail in there. Look at that, super cute. Okay, so then make sure I'm doing it. Make sure I'm doing it right. Yep, okay. Then I've got the back of my head. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that that has the little mane hanging out of it, right? And we're gonna pin this across here. Okay, I'm gonna match my seams, and match my edges, and then make it work in between. And I'm gonna try to get both of those to go out because that tends to work a little bit better for me if your seams end up nesting and that's what you do, it's totally fine. All right, and get these stuck in there. We don't normally do shout outs, but Pat's uh, seven-year-old daughter, Celia, is watching and Aww. she says that uh, she thinks that you're a great teacher. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I got my uh, start teaching years ago uh, when I first started teaching sewing um, was actually teaching kids classes and I really loved it so I'm glad that she's I'm glad she's here let's teach those kids to sew I learned to sew as a as a kid too so I think I have a little bit of extra I don't know special place in my heart for him thanks for joining us everybody I'm really glad everybody's here all right Okay, so now we got that sewn. I want to make sure, oh, that's a little bit close right here, so I'm going to go back and just re-sew it. Okay, remember what I told you yesterday, is double check all your seams, okay? Because really finding it now and being like, yeah, I'm going to take a little bit bigger seam allowance, that's fine, is so much easier than when you're at the end and you're like, oh my gosh, there's a hole in it. Yeah. All right, okay, so now that's caught. We've got our little back. So all of these seams where the fabric is caught in there, the, the nap is caught, all of these, we'll come back later and fluff those all up, okay? And it'll make a big difference in how these, these seams lay and look, because it'll sort of just blend them. You can see that, how quickly that fixes it, just blends together. All right, so now we've got the back, and we've got the front, and I don't see any other fabric pieces but my eyeballs and my bum. So I think we're good. I don't think I missed anything yet. Okay. So now what we're going to do, the main. the main, right. But I know where that's going. So I think we're good. All right. So now this is the part. This is why I left the main off is because what I found when I was sewing all of that together with the ears and the main and the forelock, it was a lot. Okay. And when I did the, um, this horse, all of the pieces that I did, I actually, I doubled up all of them. So this has like twice as many as this one does. So we're going to try and see what one does and what, how that looks. 
if I think it doesn't look good enough, I'll add another one in there and it's totally fine. Okay, so it's, it was a lot and it ended up being really difficult to sew around. Um, Hawk and testify. I was just like, okay, this is stressing me out. So, so today we're going to do it a little bit differently and see if that works to help sort of mitigate the, um, the bulk of that. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So what I'm doing, this is so weird. Okay. I hope rustic horseshoe isn't like, oh my gosh, you're never sewing my patterns again. <laughs> I love them though. I'm totally trying the stick horse next because I think they're awesome. Okay, so I'm going to pin this and basically what we're doing is we're sewing front to back. Do I have a ton of pins over there, Hawk? You do. Okay, I need to get them because I'm going to need them all. <laughs> that was quite a lot of pins. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing that I always do and I'm going to pin making sure these edges are even pinning a few inches apart and then we'll come back in and nail those in a little bit tighter. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that, that the arm gets pulled all the way out so that I catch that when I come by. Okay, Let's see if I can get that pinned, there we go. Okay, if you're having a hard time with these, um, one of the things that I, and one of the tricks that I use is that I'll pin on either side of the really thick part and then that holds it down kind of well enough that I can pin that really thick part much easier. All right, because sometimes when it's so thick, the pin just wants to shove it around and you end up getting it, the raw edges not matching and then it's really frustrating. Okay, so here we're gonna match this top seam. So this is where the forelock was, okay? And we're gonna match this with that little place that we did the little seam, okay? up okay so um you'll notice that was a little bit of a struggle because there's a lot right there these pins so the ones that i have you'll notice every once in a while i'll use um i'll specifically use a pen and you really probably don't use don't realize that i'm using a specific pin for a specific purpose but these guys we've talked about this before so sorry if you've been here and heard the lesson before these guys are thinner ones so these are medium weight Okay, they have pink on one side, red on the other. These are heavier weight, okay? They're just one solid color. And I have these, the yellow, the white, and this green color are all these heavier pins. So they are stiffer and can go through um, a lot more uh, without bending at all. So I definitely use those in the really thick places um, just because they're, they're pretty darn intense, okay? So in these areas where I'm doing two, or even three fabrics, it's, it's okay. But like at that seam allowance, I've got all of that seam stuff going and it was a lot, okay? So I do the same thing over here. Try to get this figured out. There we go. It's a whole lot of fabric. All right, so what I'm doing is I put the bulk of the fabric out the hole. So that's actually working exactly like I thought it might, okay? So now we get these seams, and then I need to get, oops, that came undone. Those seams pinned. Okay. And you can see on this pattern, I actually wrote in places that this was the ear because it was a confusing piece for me. So I wanted to make sure that I knew what it was um, sometimes I can tell what the pieces are. It's sort of like if you're apparel sewing and you know what a sleeve looks like, but if you're new to apparel sewing, you might not know what that was um, or a cuff or something. So that's what, what I did there is just to mark it so I knew what it was. And if you're wondering if I'm pinning myself, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of pins over there. Okay, so we got a ton of them coming down this side, up this side. I'm just gonna keep going. So one of the things that you could do with this is you could pin and sew just the head and then you could sew each side. All right, so if it was a little bit um, 
difficult for you with all of these pins, it's one thing you could absolutely do is just pin this head part, sew it, and then sew the sides. Okay, because it is definitely, um, it's a long seam with a lot of pins. And I want to make sure that these arms are sort of going um, straight into it. They want to sort of pull down already, and I want to make sure that they're, they're going to get sewn straight from the edge. Sort of like when you sew handles in a purse and they get twisted there. It's super frustrating. That's what I'm trying to avoid here. So you can imagine this part here is going to be pretty darn easy of these sides. And then that head is going to be fun. We'll just take our time and I'll show you how I worked through it before. All right. Okay. So this is precisely why I did this is because now all of the stuff that was in the muzzle or the face is actually sticking out this hole. Okay, which is super weird looking, but otherwise all of the mane and all of this face was stuffed in here and I had a really hard time sewing it. You could absolutely just hand sew it there, um, but I decided I wanted to see if I could figure out a different way of doing it. So um, that's pretty weird, but it might just work. Okay, let's try. Let's see. <laughs> I'm always for trying to figure out a way that will make it a little bit easier for me. Okay, so after we're done with this, if it works out the way that I want it to, then we'll stick the main in. Okay. Okay, so this side's gonna be nice and easy. Okay, the hardest part here is just gonna be making sure that my arm is going where I want it to, that I've caught all of the sides. And the arm is, you know, heading straight into the body there. Okay, and then as we work around, it's going to get a little bit funkier. Okay, and I'm going to try to keep it straight as I'm coming in, so keeping this, what I'm working with coming up as flat as possible. Okay. Okay, so now is where I get to start sewing a little bit slower, making sure everything is going where I want it to be. Are people rebelling yet? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, Everybody good. Everybody said, if you have the patience, they have the patience. Okay, good. Good, good. It's the only way to learn it, too, is just to keep trying things that are hard. We just keep doing the easy stuff. That's boring. Okay, so you can hear it kind of ka-chunking through. It's like, all right, let's get through all those layers. It's a lot because it's going through the ears right now. And so the ears is, itself is like six layers in spaces, so. Okay, here comes the top of my seam, my head here. So this is gonna be a place I gotta be real careful. Oops. I'm gonna make sure I catch it all, but I don't take too much out of this side. Okay, so that'll be definitely some place I'm gonna go back and check. So now I'm gonna twist this whole thing back toward me because I'm basically sewing in a huge U. All right, so now I'm going to get it back, move this direction. Use my little stiletto here if I can get it. There we go. Sorry. Sorry, my hands were all in the way. All right. Well, now I need like four more hands. All right. See, this is why he's here, because honestly, imagine me trying to do all this camera stuff by myself. So this is too, it was also one of those places where like, we're gonna try our best and if we have to come back over and stitch over seams and catch things, absolutely. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, look at that, we got around the head, you guys. Look at that, now we're back to the easy part. Whew. Okay, let's see how that worked. Okay, so this is all getting tucked up back behind the heads, or behind the presser foot, so to move things, make sure that it's feeding through right, make sure I'm catching my arm again. 
And you never use a, a stretch stitch. And no. It's, and it's okay with yep. the polyester thread. Yep. And I never use a stretch stitch. Not with this. Nope. With the polyester thread, it's been absolutely fine. We, I use, um, I switch in between Superior and Mettler, um, back and forth, and either one of them have been great. Okay. So now I can check this out. Okay, so this is the side that I sewed. This is the side that I need to catch. Make sure that I caught everything. Okay, and I can sort of look back here. So here's a little spot that I caught the thre the fabric. You can see it's sort of pulling there. I'm just gonna leave that because I think that it might be fine. Okay, and I'll figure out when it's, when it's out. Okay, so now you can actually check it this way because his head just pops right out. Look at that, ha! <laughs> Okay, so now I can check it. I can give these a little tug, make sure I caught my ear all in there, that nothing of my ear is hanging out. So here I see a little bit of zigzag, but if I give it a tug, it seems to be staying okay. I might go over that just a little. That one's tucked in there, yeah. Just checking to see. Yeah, it's in there, it's in there well enough, it seems. Um, has the tiniest little bit. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna secure it one more time just in case because honestly, if I go and I am stuffing his head and then it pops out the top, I'm gonna be so grumpy. Okay, so I'm just gonna come back in here. Hang on, I need to put my glasses on. Okay, get that shoved under here. So this is a time, the fact that your foot will do that extra, okay? So Hawk, can you come back here and see where I'm pushing? Okay, so this little, your, this is your presser foot lever. So if you push that up just a little bit more, it will lift up your foot, okay? Can you see the foot lift? Mm -hmm. All right, so there that's something it. to keep in mind is almost all new machines will be able to do that, okay? So my old machines from the 50s don't. Anything newer than that has, all right? So make sure that you check your machine out. A lot of people don't realize that their machine does that. Um, but that extra little poop, that extra lift makes all the difference. Okay. All right, that feels better. I feel more confident about that one. Okay, so now we have the stitch where I can stick his mane in here and stitch his mane down. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. That's what we're trying. Thanks for hanging out with me, giving this a shot. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just gonna stuff this whole thing in here and what I want to do is bring it so that the seam edge that I gave myself will come right along here and we'll stitch that down. Okay, so it's gonna be a little bit funky up here at the top. Okay, and I'm gonna pin in one side and then I'll come back and pin the two sides together. Trying to pin this and both of those sides together would just be, um, one of those exercises in frustration that I've told you guys about, okay? The other thing that you could do is that you could um, hand stitch this in if you wanted to, but I think that this is gonna work right here just fine. Okay, so it should fit this space. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna pin it in at the bottom. Okay, and so in here with my hands, I'm trying to feel and make sure that I'm not getting a whole bunch wadded up on it, okay, that it's just those two layers of the mane. Okay, look at that, it worked. Okay, that part worked. Whew, all right, we just keep checking off like, okay, that worked. Okay, that worked. Um, all right, now I'm gonna take this up here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more pins in from the other side. Okay, so I'm not even gonna retake out those pins. I'm just gonna add my second row of pins from this side that'll go through all three layers. It's actually all four, but whatever. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to get these right sides together. When I'm sewing this, I'm gonna try to be really um, aware of that brown because I don't want to lose it in there because if it gets too far in there I, the stitching that I did before will show and I don't want that to happen okay okay 
Okay, so now I've got that whole thing, this is his mane, all pinned in there. Let's give it a try. Okay, so you can see there's a whole lot in here. I'm gonna pull his stuff over just a little bit so I can get this a little bit flatter right there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna sort of aim for that area. It's about a quarter of an inch um, from the edge and hope for the best because um, honestly, with cuddle fabric, you're, you're pretty okay with being close. Okay, so here we go. Let's do this. And I'm gonna try to sew just a little bit of a heavy quarter inch. Okay, so I'm trying to get a little bit more than a quarter inch just to catch that edge if I can so that I can cover my stitching that I did on that main piece to hold it together. Okay, and then I wanna aim, so here's my stitching line from before. I'm gonna aim for that back stitch, lock it in there. All right, okay. We're gonna have no idea if that worked until we turned it around. That's kind of exciting, you guys. Just saying. Experimental sewing on live Facebook. Who knew? Okay, so this is where it's a little funky because we're putting all of that stuff, so that mane, the nose, the ears are all coming through this little hole, okay? Okay, normally we wouldn't turn this all out quite yet because we need to sew the bum on, but I want to check and see if it actually worked. Okay, look at that, he's got a mohawk. <laughs> ha ha ha, he's got a mohawk, just like Hawk does. Okay, okay. all right. <laughs> look at that, it's perfect. It's, it totally looks like a mane. Just kidding, not yet. Give it some time. Okay, but we caught it. I can give it a little tug, okay? I do like that it has a mohawk though, that's pretty funny. Okay. I had no idea how that was going to turn out. It totally worked. Okay, so now <laughs> we need to put the bum on. All right, so I'm just going to stick all of that stuff into here. Try to shove it toward the top a little bit so that when I sew this, because I have to sew this in a circle, it's going to be a little bit funky and a little bit thick. All right, so here is my bum. Okay, that's what she calls it. To the bum okay so i've got this piece and it's got marks on it okay for the front center so where i had marked it for the fold it's totally going to be there okay the side seams and then we have a spot in the back that we're going to leave open and that's how we're going to stuff the body and the head of it all right so here is my center notch i did that same thing this is what i did yesterday where i draw that little line that means don't sew here Okay, it's really easy when you have so many pins and so many notches to forget that this is the gap to leave. Um, so that's why I marked it like that. All right, so I'm just gonna take this. Here is my front center. Okay, try to get those lined up. All right, and then we're gonna do the side seams. There was a lot of breath holding. Yeah, I was holding my breath too. Yeah. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I was like, if this doesn't work. Um, all right, guys, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we're beating out daytime TV right now for, uh, for drama and tension. <laughs> that was pretty exciting. I like that it worked. <laughs> I'd be like, I guess we're having bad, bad connection, guys. We gotta go. But look at it, it worked. We did it. <laughs> it's always kind of nice when I, you know, I don't know, I have these crazy ideas. What? <laughs> we did it. We did it. I did it with their encouragement. I think, I think people were encouraging me. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Because yeah. I was. We'll, we'll watch later Definitely. and see the waterfall of likes and laughs. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it's entertaining. I'm glad I've gotten to a point too where I'm like, if it totally messed up, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. All right, let's try something else. But we got this. Also, um, Ellen needs to tell me what we're doing next week because I don't remember. Are we here next week? 
Ellen, pop up. I can't remember. For some reason, my mind has gone completely blank. We're doing the... No, we're not doing the row. I can't. I can't remember. Sorry, Ellen's going to have to tell me because I need to tell you guys what we're doing. I'm watching. Okay. She might pop up over here, too. We'll keep an eye on it. We have these things all planned out, and then, you know, I'm working on, like, six different projects at one time, and sometimes I forget. But I know that we're... Oh, I think we're doing the Embrace Blanket. She might come back and say that's it. Um, yes. Is that it? Yes. There we go. You guys My brain were, just had a tick were. for just a little bit. That's all. Tick, 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 tick. Um, Synchronized answering. That's right. Yes. Um, yeah, so we're doing the Embrace Double Gauze... Uh, blanket next week. That's what it is. So if you wanted to work with the embrace, we did the pajamas like, I don't know, a few weeks ago. And um, people really like working with the embrace, but they don't always want to sew clothes. So we're going to do um, a little blanket. And that'll be fun. Okay, so I want to make sure that this, this matches. Okay, which if I hold this out, it totally, those line up. All right, and I can get that. I know that's going to that's gonna fit when I sew that together um, by hand later. All right, so I'm going to leave these two in the uh, world of sewing, one of these things, one of the things that a lot of us do is our start and stop. We can do this double pin. So we know when we get back to the two pins that that means that we are supposed to stop there. Okay. Oh, that's the one that I cut off a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I rotary cut that baby and then had to replace my blade. Um, Okay, so I've got this whole thing sewn in, or pinned in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it from this side, because that's like a little cake. Ta-da! Totally. Looks like a little horse, right guys? Okay, not. Not at all. But I'm going to sew it like this. So I'm going to have to squish this out of the way. Because it's soft, it's cuddle, it's going to smash a lot. I can really get it out of the way. But it does look pretty funky right now. You get a pineapple upside down cake. Well, this is a horsey face inside out cake. <laughs> <laughs> that it is 100 percent goodness yes okay so now we're going to give this a try all right so i'm going to get this all over here i'm trying to get this all lined up get it shoved so so really having a stiletto or something like that i mean i can really shove this underneath here that would be really hard to do with my fingers Okay, so there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons I love this tool. All right, so I'm gonna back stitch here. This is too hard to do that little turn and go off the side, so I'm not going to. All right, if um, one of the other things that you could do, um, if you want to make sure that that seam is really pretty accurate when you go back and hand sew it, is that you can stitch the seam line first. Um, it's a tr another trick that Gail taught me because she's really smart like that. Um, I don't always do it, but sometimes, especially if it's something, like if that were gonna be on the front, I would do it, because um, it'll keep it much smoother. Okay, make sure my, my layers are together. I don't wanna lose, I can see that bottom one wants to sort of slide over a little. So this may be, you know, a part where I have to come back and re-sew some things. We'll see. All right. Okay, and you can see I'm sort of pulling it to keep a little tension on it to feed it through because it definitely wants to pile up on itself. Okay, so here's my, my leg seam. I'm going to make sure I catch that in there too. Get on the other side of that seam. to pull and force it back together. Get that to go underneath. Okay, can you hear me concentrating, you guys? Like normally I'm like blah 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 blah. Now I'm like, okay, I gotta think really hard right now. Try to make sure that all of this goes together like I want it to. Okay. Like I said, this may be a place where I have to come back because I can't see the bottom at all. Ooh, that was close. Um, and I may not have caught it completely, but we'll see. I just figured I'd give it a shot and then I have to come back over. It's fine. Um, but try hard in the first place. Okay. 
All right. I think that's, that's, oh, that's my double pin. That's my stop. Look at, I made it all the way around you guys. I did it. Okay. All right. So now, now we get to turn it over and see. Look at that beautiful oval. <laughs> it's so not beautiful, but that's the joy of cuddle. Okay, so I caught it. This is a funky spot right here, so I'm going to go fix that. Okay, because I just want to smooth it out. The rest of these that are a little bit funky, I don't really care. Um, there, that's enough. Eh, I'll catch it again, just because both sides are a little bit small. So I'll catch that. I'm going to catch it from this side. Okay. So I'm just going to shove that all out of the way as well as I can. Okay. Put my foot down, grab my stiletto, put my glasses on. It's like surgery time here. Okay. So I want to make sure that I'm crossing um, the seam that I already did. I'm gonna come back over here. Catch that a little bit better. Cross the seam that I did again. Back stitch. Okay, and then let me find that other little spot that I wanted to redo. There it is. Okay, and I can sort of manipulate the stuff to the other side just a little bit more. No, no, I lost it again. Keep that as flat as possible. Come on, little guy. There we go. So this is definitely something of this, like, you know, seems terribly annoying to you. Um, you can absolutely do this by hand if it's an issue. Okay? All right. So here's the big reveal. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Do some little yoga breathing. Oh, but then we still have to do the main. I have to show you guys how to do that. And then we have to stick the eyeballs in. And stuff them. Okay. Look, he's to roadkill mode. Yay. Okay, so his bum is all on. I can check that. Make sure I can pull everything. Pull his legs. Give a little tug. Especially if you're giving this to a little. Make sure that you've got those and they're really good. And that they're not going to pull out. Because um, kids will like to, you know, drag this around. Um, by arms and legs and stuff. Okay, so now we've gotten to this point. So I want to do the eyes and then we'll do the mane. Okay. All right, so here is a set of eyeballs. Okay, so these are the big guys. These are the 30 millimeters. Okay, if I go in here. Yeah, there's my, there's my eyeball marking, okay. Yep. Oh, I lost him again. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. I did it nice and big. So I'm actually... Should have done that with the other hand. There we go. I'm going to snip a tiny little hole here. Okay. Because this guy has to come in from the other side and push that open. So I'm actually going to try to push it through from this side first. There we go. Okay. And that will sort of get that the hole so that I could find it and have it already stretched just a little bit. Okay. Mm. So then I was just able to pop it right in there. Okay. There's one eyeball. Ooh, that's an eye that's looking at you, isn't it? All right, so I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna push that all the way down. So I got it just popped on there just a little bit because I wanna make sure that it was right, okay? So now you can see there's a little bit of a ledge in there. All right, so I'm just gonna push that. Let's see if we can get this so you guys can see. There we go. Snaps down, okay? This won't come off. Okay, that's why they call these safety eyes. It's because this is locked on there really, really well. Okay, and it is not going to come off. So I'm going to see if I can come back and find where the other eye should be. So there it is. 
Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again. So when I do smaller eyes, I don't ever actually cut a hole in it because usually the smaller eyes, I can sort of um, wiggle it in there because uh, the post is much smaller, but these posts are really big. Um, so I need to make an actual hole for it, okay? So I'm do the same thing. I'll push it through this side, get that in there, okay? Then I can take and hold this, pop that eye out. I'm not gonna let go of this because I need to remember where that hole was, shove it back in, okay? Now I'll get the little backing again. Oops. Okay, you can always hear it do that little click click. So whenever you're using safety eyes, make sure that you do that. They come in all different sizes. I have them down to I think eight millimeter, maybe six millimeter. Um, this is the biggest that I've seen is the 30. Oh, look at his little eyes, how cute is that? Oh my goodness, he's so cute, you guys, he's so cute. Okay, <laughs> so now, okay, so now we've got his eyeballs in and now he's got this really weird hairdo going on, okay? So let me show you what I'm going to do with that. Okay. So put my glasses on so I can see, and I'm just going to cut along those lines that I did. Oops. But wait, there's more. Okay, so these are all the marks that I did at a quarter of an inch. All right, so all of this is going to make a mess. I'm going to have a big mess on my table when I'm done. And I'm just going to vacuum it up, and it's going to be adorable. Okay, and I'm using the little bitty scissors here. Like, I have longer scissors that I could use and probably do this in one fell swoop. But what I'm afraid of is that I would lose my quarter inch line, and it would end up going off somewhere else, and I would you know, cut it funky. So I'm just gonna take it a little bit at a time. Okay, all right, one more. So I'm just following those lines. So they're not gonna be perfectly straight and that's okay. Okay, and you can see I'm kind of keeping a little bit of tension on it. Okay, all right, let me give it a good little shake. Here we go. Okay. Oh, look at his little hair now. Look at how cute that is. Okay, and now the cool thing, we just keep losing hair. Boop, boop, boop. It's like a haircut, you know. This is what happens when people get haircuts too. So we just, you know, a little detritus for a while. Okay. So then you can see it kind of naturally wants to curl and this is the joy of it being on the bias. And then if you pull it, you can kind of twist it a little bit more. Okay, that's the trick from Gales that it'll twist more. So this is a fun little, you know, sitting in front of the TV project. Okay, but even just cut on the bias, it already twists a little bit and I added a little bit more. Only did a few of them, super cute. All right, ready to cut more? Okay, so now this guy, <laughs> because he's big, I'm actually going to cut a bunch of it with the rotary. Okay, because I can cut up quite a ways with it still flat. And I'll cut the rest of it with the scissors. straighten that and you'll see I'll have some little hair so cute okay so just to reiterate this was a six inch by ten inch piece for this cut on the bias and that's what makes it curl a little bit and you can add a little extra curl okay chaos is one of the few times that um I know that you don't normally do this, but you can vacuum the mane, uh -huh. and that will put the spiral. Oh, in. you're right, because the stretch isn't what you want to usually do. Yeah, I try not to um, to vacuum pieces because it'll um, like straight into the machine because it stretches it. 
But this is actually one of those times that you're right. It would totally... See, this is why we love Gale. I'm going to make I Love Gale t-shirts, I swear. Mm -hmm. She's taught me a lot. Okay. So now I've got that. And so now I can just come up to the end and just keep snipping the rest of these up along that line. Okay, so How that was How close are you getting up in there? I want to see. Right up to it. Okay, because even if I snip just the tiniest bit of the Lux Cuddle that's the, the horse, it's not going to matter. Okay, so when I did it with the unicorn, I actually did all of this first. And then what I found was it was really hard to try to keep all of that stuff out of the way while I was sewing. That was, that was hard. Okay. So I wanna make sure I'm not cutting that back piece too. So I'm trying to be real careful here. Cutting up to the edge, not cutting the other piece. Cutting these little bits. And just want to do this on all of them. And then we're going to stuff in. Whoops. I'm kind of waiting for me to just cut one of these completely off. Because you know that's going to happen. Just saying. On the, uh, the white one, I actually, I had too much in the forelock, so I gave him a trim, and then I gave him more of a trim, and then I cut some completely out to the seam line. Yeah, did a lot. Look at that. See it? Coming right along. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to get all of that stuff out of the way. Okay, get his little hoof out of the way. So I have some space over here that I can cut. So this is where you want to be really careful. Hard to, uh, it's hard to talk and not, you know, take your finger off the rotary cutter. Yeah, yeah, you concentrate. So okay. I'm, yeah. This, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. That's a good question. Will it constantly shed or will it eventually stop? Oh, no, it'll totally stop. It'll totally stop. So the thing about cuddle versus other minky fabrics is that that's one of the things about ours is that it will 100% stop. It just has to have like, we call it the initial shed, which is basically where you cut all of those fibers loose and they have to sort of work themselves off of the fabric. Um, so that vacuum will help. The dryer trick that we've talked about before, um, it wouldn't work in this situation. This is just gonna make a mess and then I'm gonna vacuum it. Um, and I'm going to vacuum it and vacuum the main, just like she said, because it's a great idea. Um, but the same goes for all of the Lux cuddles. So like when we cut it, we use it for binding. Um, one of the biggest questions I get is that really it's just the raw edges and it's going to keep fraying. And um, absolutely it will not. Okay. Oof, I got a little off there. Shrug. All right, so now I'm going to do the last little bits where I can get up to the top. Okay, and honestly, if I cut any of these off, I'd be okay with it too. It's fine. Okay. So like I said, in the pattern, she uses yarn. She uses uh, chunky yarn, which is super cute too. Lots of things that you could do with that. The cuddle is just a kind of a fun way of doing it that gives it a really um, kind of a different look that I like. Yeah. And I notice if you do this with a wider, on the bias with a wider strip. So like this one, I did it skinny, like the quarter inch, because I want it to look more like hair. Um, but if you do it a little bit wider, like half inch, it spirals beautifully. So it needed a little bit wider to get it to spiral as well as I wanted it to. But Gail may have a little secret more than, I mean, the vacuum. We're going to try that and see what happens. Because, yeah, the stretch is what makes it curl in on itself. So um, remember that when you're working with it in all sorts of ways. So anytime you stretch it, 
um, that's when it will totally curl. So you can see here, you can see that it's the bias because my lines are going this direction. Oh, yeah. Okay. Really well. Okay. All right. Look at that. Ta-da! I'm so happy. It worked. Okay, we still have to do its, its tail, but I think I might wait on its tail. Hold on. Oh my gosh, it's a floby. It's totally a floby, you guys. <laughs> All right, so, all right, we've got that. It's just, I really want to do it. Should I just do it? Just do the tail, right? Just do it, we have to finish it. Okay, this will be easier because these are long, skinny, and go all the way up to the top. I just don't want to cut the bottom parts. So if I can get this to grab, if I keep some tension on it, I can keep it pretty straight, I think. It is teeny tiny. I would be more accurate with my scissors. Shrug. Okay, so this type, guys, too, this is from where you're, I'm pushing harder on it because I'm trying to keep it straight. So this will get stuck in there, but if you just kind of rub this up, you'll be all right. And then if you take a wet washcloth to this, it'll all come up and be just fine. Okay. Okay, and you can see I obviously made the tail ones much longer because I thought it would be fun. The other one I didn't make them quite this long. Try to get all of that stuff out of the way. And the same thing here. Lost it. So glad you guys were here to witness this. Look, I tried something and it worked. It's so exciting. <laughs> okay. Well, I feel like every time that I sew a pattern, I kind of do just a little bit of trying things differently to make sure that I'm doing it the easiest, best, most efficient, and funnest way. All right, so now I'm gonna trim up to the end on these. And then we'll use the little vacuum one more time, and then we'll stuff it. What so, vacuum is that? Oh, it's a little uh, Black & Decker vacuum. Uh, you can find them, you know, probably at Target or whatever. I got mine on Amazon. Um, it's about $60 for the vacuum. So it's not super duper cheap, but it's also super duper great. Um, I have used it for, uh, I've had it for four years now, and uh, I use it all the time, as you can imagine. I have two of them. And I really, um, yeah, I love them a lot. We talked about it the other day that the biggest thing about getting a portable vacuum or hand vac for your studio when you're working with Cuddle is to make sure that it blows out the back of it and not the sides of it. Okay. All right, a few more little snips. Oh, sorry. I just wanna get down to the base where it was sewn in. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, you ready to vacuum again? Yeah. Let's do it. Right. Haha, -ha, he's adorable. Look at how cute that tail works. OMG. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes I get really excited about how cute they are too. <laughs> okay, I love this little guy. He's adorable. Okay, so stuffing. So um, the stuffing that I have today, 
is the same that I've used before. It's the Royal Silk. Okay, Royal Silk from um, Fairfield. Um, quickly, there are a few different kinds. So this is the kind that I like. Let me find. I had them here. So they sent me little packages a while ago. They're like little basic samples of the kinds that they have. So this is the kind that you're probably really familiar with is this polyfill. Um, so this is like the very basic level and it's, it's fine, it's polyfill. Um, it works well, but it tends to clump and it, I don't particularly love it as much as I love some of the other ones. So this one is like the basic one. This is the nicest one in my opinion. They also have this one that is um, sort of an in-between. So it's a lot softer than this and a lot more, um, more like this than this is. You can even see with the, if I squeeze it, that this, like you can see, just see the difference in how, like this one is just a kind of a thicker one. Um, and these, the fibers are so thin that it's much softer. Okay, and I'll show you this one is kind of a middle ground. Okay, so it's good, better, best, in my opinion. Okay, it's just the Teresa opinion. I mean, it might be, you know, their opinion too, but it's definitely mine. All right, so this is just regular polyfill. It's kind of coarse, a little bit scratchy. The Ultra Plush is nicer, super soft polyester fiber fill. Royal Silk is my favorite and it's just really, really, um, it's just kind of lush. So those are different kinds. So you could use any of them, okay? It really is just personal preference on what I, um, what I like, all right? So the other thing that we could add to this is the eyelids. I actually really like his eyeballs and I think I'm gonna keep them that way. Um, the eyelids are made the same as we made the nostrils, where you sew it and then you turn it. Um, the eyelids are funky though, and I might sew one just to show you, um, because the eyelids are actually sewn completely shut. And then you trim the back and then turn it, or put a little hole in the back and turn it out through that hole. Okay, which is, which is funky. I will give you that. Okay. Let's see if I can get this up in there. Um, so yes, it's just gonna take a little bit of effort. And then when we're done stuffing him, then we would, um, we'll stitch that bottom closed, okay? But this one she said to use a 20 ounce bag is what you would need. This is a 24 ounce bag. And I only used a portion of it for the other one. So I'm gonna stuff this one a lot harder and see, um, see how that works, just to see the difference. Look at that face coming together. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Somebody asked me who I was making it for and I was like, uh, the sample department. <laughs> but now I'm like, uh, maybe me. I think it needs to live in the studio. Can hang out with the Kimber Bears and the elephant. My lion when he comes back. That'd be great. We'll have a little, have a whole little, uh, a zoo here. If you ever decide to do the, um, the stick, the stick. Uh-huh. Everybody? Use the llama. The llama. I, I, I wanna, oh, I, okay. I'm, I'm requesting that there's, there should be a llama in our living room. Oh, okay. Okay. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. The llama is super cute, too. Yeah. He's adorbs. Okay. Oh, look. He's like a little, little hand puppet at this point. Cute. Right? Look at that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Is that Mr. Ed's coloring? Can I call him Mr. Ed? <laughs> okay. The other thing we have to do too is we still have to stuff his arms and legs. So we have to stuff his body, but don't forget. <laughs> his arms and legs are stuffed separately. Okay. So this is where I'm going to use this little chenille stem that I used in the other guy and I took him out. Okay. And I'm going to bend this just a little bit less, but I bent it because the ends can be pointy. Okay. So I'm going to kind of twist it bend these ends up here, bend these up here, okay, try to twist them together so they don't fall apart too much. It's just three chenille stems and I'm going to stick that up his neck now and then stuff around it, okay, and that'll make his head stick up a little bit better. You can also use, um, like the rubber from pool noodles or I've used, um, I don't even know if they sell them anymore, but like the old curlers that had like the metal bar in them. Um, 
that you could like twist and then you twist it around your hair. Um, those work as well. Um, the hair rollers, the foam hair rollers work really well in smaller spaces. This one needs to be long enough. Um, you could actually put the chenille stem through a few of those hair rollers and stick it up here too. Um, you want something that's a little bit soft, so like using a chopstick wouldn't be very good because it would just shove up to the top. Okay. So, um, but something in there to give it a little stability is kind of nice. The chenille stems worked out really well. Um, so that's why I'm gonna try that again. Okay. All right, now I'm just trying to work the, um, we need like one of those surgery cams so you can see what I'm doing with my hands up there. Basically, I'm just trying to feed the stuffing all up in here because this is gonna be the spot there where it wants to be weak. So I'm trying to get the stuffing all kind of shoved up around the chenille stems in his neck, okay? So if that's nice and stiff, his neck is gonna sit up and you can see it sits really nicely right now, okay? Then it's a little bit easier to fill that up. All right, now I'm just gonna fill around, the chenille stem is hanging out here. And you can see it, burp. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill around this guy. Oops, he's got part of his tail inside. Okay. okay. So I just wanna fill up and around that so it'll be nice and centered, basically. Um, and then uh, just stiffer. Okay, without being too stiff. Um, so one thing, I tend to want to overstuff my animals, but I'm also not using them as stuffed animals. So um, I did, you know, I taught at Road to California last year and we did the little elephant there. And um, most people used a half a bag to stuff it and I used a whole bag. So, um, you know, you can stuff it as much as you'd like to, but I tend to, I do tend to make them a little bit stiffer. If you're using a cotton to do this, you always need to use more. So it is one of the, the perks of using cuddle is it doesn't require quite as much stuffing. He's getting there. He's so cute, you guys. Okay. Okay, a little bit more. And then the thing that I made, um, we had talked about is getting him to sit up really nice. Everybody's been waiting for this. Okay. Um, side <laughs> conversations about this. I'm okay, good. <laughs> Because you were like, she'll get there eventually. <laughs> she does, uh, eventually. She always gets around to it. Like, yeah, it takes me, it takes me a while sometimes. So this is a little pouch that I made. I didn't pack this very full. Normally, I would probably have twice as much. I can't find my big bag, so I didn't want to use all of my pellets. Um, but normally, I would probably use about this much, which is maybe a third of a cup, do you think? Looking at it like this? Third to a half of a cup. Okay, so enough that it has some weight to it. Um, and then all I did is I sewed two, I sewed two four by five inch squares together. I left a hole, we poured it in there, and then I just sewed it shut. Okay, so these are the Fairfield poly pellets, and this is the little, basically just a muslin sack that I made um, to add to the bottom of it. So what I'll do is I'll put that right here in his bum. Okay put this in here. This is what makes it so that it is, uh, I feel like it's child safe because this, those pellets can't come out. They're not gonna go anywhere because they're stuck in that little bag. And then I'm gonna sew this shut, okay? And that will weigh his bum down, all right? I hope that all made sense. Ask me if you have a question. It's, um, and like I said, it's made by the same people who make the, um, the polyfill, all right? So now we're gonna stuff his arms. So again, the pattern, if you haven't gotten it already, you can get it at RustyHorseshoe.com. They have it on sale right now. You have to use the coupon code SHANNON30. So it's capital, um, all capital, SHANNON30, and then it's 30% off this pattern. Um, which is a super cute pattern, and it gives you the options for doing it as a rainbow, as a donkey, and as this horse. And it's written for cotton, but totally works for cuddle. You could do it in all sorts of different cuddle. This is one where you could definitely have added like belly markings and stuff like that. I just really like this fabric, so I wanted to use it. Okay, and you can see I'm just doing a little bit at a time in his arm. Just shove it down all the way. Okay, this would be another, if you wanted to do um, another little bag of pellets, you could do that and stick it down at the end of his hands too. 
Okay. Okay. And then we'll get that. I'll shove just a tiny bit up there. Okay. And then I'll hand stitch that close and I'm just going to do a little ladder stitch there. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing to his legs. Find the hole. Okay, and the other thing we're going to do is, like, because I keep seeing them, is we're going to need to trim the threads. Okay, so I still have to trim threads, and then I will um, do all of the things. Like, so here's a really great example of where the nap gets stuck in there, and then it looks weird. But if I come in here and I take the stiletto and I kind of rub that up and pull the nap out, it blends it all together and it looks beautiful. Okay. Everybody's holding on real well. You were, you know, we're at two hours. Are we now? Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I told you it was going to be like two hours today. It's a long one. We're almost there, though. Next week, we're going to do the uh, embrace blanket. So, like I said, if you haven't worked with the double gauze before, this is a great opportunity. Um, the pattern is a free download from our site. And we're actually going to do that. Um, I will be using the serger, too, on that one. Um, so if you have a serger slash cover stitch machine, this is a great project for that. It's super duper uh, fast, easy, and really um, just a wonderful, I really love that blanket actually. It's, it's a wonderful sort of grown up thing. So this is very kid friendly. The next one will be a little, well, it can be baby friendly or grown up friendly. Okay, also I think it's really funny that most of the stuffed animals, I think I told you this before, so most of the stuffed animals that I've taught it ends up being that the people who make them just decide to keep them for themselves. So as much as we're like, I'm going to make this for my grand, you know you're going to make one for yourself. Just do it. Admit it. Keep it. Okay. Other hole. End it up here. Oh, my goodness. He's so cute. Okay, that's what I'm doing this afternoon is sewing this up. I'll post the finished finished. Um, I might do his eyeball. We'll see. Um... After I do all the other stuff, I'll decide how much I want to do an eyelid or not. Um, but I will post this up on I Love Cuddle. So if you are not a, um, a member of the I Love Cuddle group yet, um, join us. It's just on Facebook. I'm sure Ellen has posted a link to it. Um, we post all sorts of stuff over there. You can post questions and comments and projects and all of that good stuff, okay? Um, so join us there. And then... Um, what was the other thing I was, oh, if you sign up for our newsletter, you'll get information on all of the sew-alongs that we do, and um, then you'll get information, too, when we do other classes, because shops will start doing classes again soon. Shops are opening up in all sorts of different ways right now, which is great. So make sure, if you haven't found your local quilt shop, make sure you do a little Google search for it, okay? A lot of people think that they don't have one, and then they actually do, so... Um, Make sure that you're looking. All right, one more. Are we ready? One more little arm, and then he's done. Okay, any other questions? If you have any questions, shout them out, because um, otherwise I'm going to stuff his arm, and then we're going to show you the whole thing and say goodbye. Okay? I'm just going to feed his little arm full of stuffing right now. Boop, boop, boom. Okay. So his little hair turned out awesome. I'm very excited about that. Thanks for coming along with that little that little craziness. So it was fun. I like it when I have ideas and they work because sometimes they don't. Sometimes I have ideas and they really, they don't pan out at all. Um, I try to think forward though, figure it out. This one actually, it did, it worked. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with this amount of stuffing and um, yeah, and I still have quite a bit left in the bag. So, um, okay, so his legs need to be <laughs> Look at him, he's so cute. Um, his legs need to be sewed shut, and so you can see like where these are. I'll be able to sort of just pull that, and then I'll just um, ladder stitch those closed. Okay, and because it's Lux Cuddle, it's totally going to hide in there. O-M-G. He's pretty adorbs, right? Okay. All right, we did it. Look, now I have my own little stuffy. He's so cute. Yeah, introduce, him to, uh, introduce him to that one. Yeah, they need, they need to hang out and be buddies. Friends, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, his little, his little pellet's fallen out. Have to sew that one in. All right. Um, yay, look at that. We have a new little friend here in the studio. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So uh, you can join us next week. We'll be back. 
again. Um, thank you so much for coming along. I really, <laughs> it's super cute up there. I really appreciate you being here. Hank, thanks for hanging out and doing all of this experimental sewing with me and figuring it out. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. Join us on I Love Cuddle and you can um, ask any questions there. We'll be back next week, like I said, for that little blanket. Um, and we'll talk about how to work with Embrace next week. So that'll be really fun. So join us for Sew Together Tuesday. And until then, happy sewing.